So, you are here to actually watch benchmarks already, but what's the point of having benchmarks if you don't know what's actually being benchmarked? Hmm. Well, to really simplify things, you have your system memory, known as RAM, random access memory, and then you have your memory controller, which controls your RAM. And usually the frequency of both is linked. Current RAM is DDR, double data rate, and although vendors will call it for example 3200 MHz, it is actually 3200 MHz transfers per second, being in reality 1600 MHz. But they call them 3200 MHz due to being DDR and to look more appealing. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have a 3200 MHz kit, then your RAM's true frequency will be 1600 MHz, which will also be the frequency of your memory controller. Geardown mode allows the DRAM device to turn off its internally generated rate clock for latching, which is storing a value, on the memory's command or address buses. Putting this to English, it allows the RAM to be disconnected from the memory controller's frequency, usually using half the RAM's true frequency, while maintaining the memory controller's one. So, for our example, for a brief moment, we would have RAM at 800 MHz, while the memory controller would stay at 1600. So, this should be bad, right? Well, not entirely. This conservative way of storing values can potentially allow for higher frequencies, broader compatibility and better stability, which is great for the average user. But in terms of real performance, disabling gear down mode and using 1T command rate is the way to go, since when it is enabled, it will tell the memory subsystem to disregard the command rate setting bias, so having 1T or 2T won't really matter that much. As for 1T and 2T, they are the common rates, which are kind of waiting states. A higher number means more waiting time till the memory refreshes itself, so technically, the lower the number, the higher the performance. But not all RAM kits can run 1T, and with gear down mode enabled, things get a little different. So, will these changes really bring a real world performance difference, or are they just one of those things that aren't worth the time of the average user? Well, let's find out. Hello guys, Ashing Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So for today's video I really wanted to bring you something different with gear down mode on versus off with both 1T, command rate 1 and command rate 2, 1T and 2T, okay? That's basically it. As you saw in the previous explanation, uh, there are lots of things going on and I really wanted to show you if it is actually worth to spend time tweaking your system with 1T, 2T, gear down mode on, off and so on. Basically, that's what I want to show you. The usual tests are 1080p, 1440p and 4K, okay, for the several case scenarios. And yeah, I think that's it. Let's now finally go to the results right after the sponsor of today's video. Sponsoring today's video, we have GBG Mall. Now with their new Black Friday promotion, where you can use my SKG discount code and get 30% off, making your Windows 10 Pro only $13. After getting the key, you'll have it in your profile, and all you need to do is go to your Windows settings, and BAM! You have an activated system. Today's first game is nothing less than CSGO, where you're either playing against cheaters or normal players with good skills but low rank. Cheaters. As for results, we have a bit of results all over the place at 1080p. I tested several times and I still don't know how GDM of 2T actually brings more performance than 1T, which makes no sense, but happened. 
Maybe the motherboard loosened some sub timings when command rate was changed to 1T, I don't really know, but I don't actually see any other explanation. But, since the results are also messed up at 4K with GDM on 2T being faster when it should actually be the slowest, let's just assume this old engine doesn't go well with RAM timings. Now with a more recent game that also has an older engine. Basically some underperforming engine with a crappy CPU optimization. At 1080p the average FPS tend a bit more to the GDM of 1T, which sounds correct, but we also get mixed results in the 1% lows and not only at 1080p but also at 1440p and 4K. But since this game is constantly getting updates and has some performance issues with the HD textures, I assume we can't trust that much the 1% lows. Overall, no big changes here. Now with PUBG using the X11 and high settings. As you saw in the side by side comparison, god knows why, but the GDM on 2T was actually getting a bit better performance at 1080p than 1T. That should never happened, but it did. If you look to the results, GDM on 1T is actually the worst performer in this game, while GDM off 1T is the best performer at 1440p and strangely, the GDM on 2T is the best performer at 1080p. It seems the more I test, the less I know. Let's move on. Now with Shadow of the Tomb Raider using the X12 and high settings. Here we finally have some more stable results, even at over 200 average FPS. Overall the results are all within the margin of error, being the only differences in the 1% lows that also seem a bit odd in some scenarios, but way more believable than the previous results for example. Once again, no game changer. Now we finally get some consistent results with Detroit Become Human, even though it was a gameplay. At 1080p, 3 FPS less than the average with GDM on 2T and GDM off 1T finally bringing higher 1% lows than the others, with 91.8 FPS. At 1440p we have once again the same scenario, with GDM off bringing the best 1% lows and also the best averages, and at 4K any difference will be gameplay related as we were GPU bottlenecked. Overall, some gains, but nothing relevant. Now with another CPU heavy title and it is Civilization 6 using the X12 and high settings as well. This game is highly CPU intensive, but that doesn't mean it is sensitive in this particular scenario, and as we can all see, the averages are all within the margin of error at all resolutions, and even the 1% lows would fit in that if we take the margin of error for example as 1%. So nothing new here. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. 
Reaching the final line, we have Need for Speed Heat. A game that I know it is very RAM and CPU sensitive, since I tested it several times before in several scenarios. The 4K results, though, are different because in some of the races it started to rain in the end, and since we are GPU bottlenecked at 4K, the rain would sometimes lower the numbers. At 1080p and 1440p, we see that the averages vary a bit, which is normal due to being a gameplay, but if you look at the 1% lows, you can actually see that in both resolutions, GDM off 1T has the higher results, and that GDM on 2T has actually the worst ones, even more at 1440p. But overall, I mean, no real game changers, not even close. But interesting to see. Let's go to the conclusion. So guys, what do you think about the results? Well, in terms of results, you saw that the difference is none. Well, I wouldn't say none, but the difference is minimal in real world performance. We do know that technically 1T and GDM off is way faster because we don't actually have the RAM going to half its speed in some scenarios, uh, not all of course, but in some scenarios, and we have half the waiting time to the, for the RAM to refresh itself. So basically it should mean way higher performance, but I mean, the systems nowadays work so well with these new, um, not new, but with these technologies that the difference in real world performance is almost none. Being it a GPU case scenario, which is most likely to not have any effect on it, uh, or a CPU slash RAM uh, bottleneck scenarios, okay? Like for example PUBG, like for example CSGO, and we see almost no difference with all of the, um, of the results being within the margin of error. So, yeah. So basically you want a conclusion as simple as it can be, don't waste time with gear down mode on or off and don't waste time with 1T and 2T. And I tell you this because you will get so much more from overclocking your RAM and tweaking your timings and sub-timings. For example, watch this video I made some months ago of the Ryzen 5 5600X, the same CPU used here, with several frequencies and timings. And then you can see that using improved timings and sub-timings just gets you way better results than gear down mode or 1T or 2T, okay? And I'm telling you this because using GDM off, so gear down mode off, um, and 1T is actually better performance wise. But at the same time, if you actually use GDM mode on and 2T or even GDM mode on 1T, you can actually overclock way better. And when I say way better, in some scenarios it's really way better, you can push way tighter timings, so lower timings, which is better, means less latency, and higher frequencies. For example, in some scenarios, if you want, um, if you want CL16, just an example, CL16, 16, 16, 16, 36. If you want those timings with, for example, GDM off, you will only achieve like 3600 MHz stable. But if you actually want to use GDM on, you may be able to achieve 37, 33 MHz or even 3800 MHz stable as well. Okay. And that difference in frequency will actually bring you more frequency and timings, of course, will actually bring you more performance than having the GDM off and 1T versus the GDM on and 2T. So you'll actually want to enable GDM and maybe choose 1T because if you have GDM with 1T, uh, it won't actually be 1T, like I said in the beginning of the video, so things will be a bit different. Uh, but even if you use GDM on, the system will be more stable, you will be able to reach higher frequencies with lower timings, hence having more performance than lower frequencies with higher timings with GDM off and 1T. So, final, just use GDM and don't sweat it. Overclock your RAM, tweak your timings and sub-timings, and you'll have more performance. And well guys, hope you really enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. <laughs> Mostly share the video and leave your like, really helps a lot. The YouTube, YouTube algorithm, algorithm is messed, messed up. up. Don't forget, leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this video and the results. And see you in the next one. Ciao.